Welcome back again to the Ivory Tower Collections, specifically the Ivory Tower Collections Lab. Today we're going to take a look at the Intellivision 2, and more specifically the Intellivision 2 controller. Now the Intellivision 2 controller uh, brought with it a couple of changes. Obviously it's a redesigned version of the controller. It's a little bit smaller, and it has a pretty nifty feature. That feature is that it has removable controllers. However, there's also two issues with the Model 2 controller. One that's not such a big issue is that some people like myself, due to the different design of it overall, we don't find the controller as comfortable to use. The second really big issue with these controllers is that if you have a controller that stops operating due to a broken internal Mylar uh, circuit trace, or because your number pad overlay is starting to deteriorate, there are currently no replacement parts for the Intellivision 2 controller. That brings us to today's video and talking about this. This looks like a standard Intellivision Model 1 controller, and for the most part it is. However, this is a brand new controller. Specifically, this is the controller from an Intellivision flashback console that was sold a number of years back. The cool thing about the flashback, besides all the games it had built in, was the fact that the controllers were also detachable with the same 9-pin connector. The problem is, out of the box, the flashback controller is not made to be pin compatible with a standard Intellivision, either with the Model 2 or with the Sears units. And as a result, these controllers by themselves will not actually function at all when used with an Intellivision Model 2 or Sears system. What do you do about that? Well, that's what the focus of today's video is going to be about. Here we are looking at the Intellivision Flashback Controller. Now, a few things I want to note about today's project. One is to keep in mind that this is a semi-permanent modification to the controller. Technically, what we're going to do can be undone, but uh, it's not something that can be undone quickly. It's, it can't be undone without taking the controller apart and, and basically having to redo some wiring. So that's something to keep in mind. A few years back, and maybe even possibly still, uh, there were individuals who made adapters, basically wire harnesses, that allowed you to plug into your Intellivision 2 console, or even Sears console, and the other end would provide you with a connector for the flashback controller, and it handled all of the rewiring necessary within the wiring harness so that you didn't have to internally or actually modify the flashback controller. Me, myself, I actually have a few extras of these, and so for me, it would be nice to have a good working, good, decent quality Intellivision replacement controller that can be used on either my Sears or Intellivision 2 console systems. But uh, it might be a very good solution for you if you have a Model 2 Intellivision that isn't functioning and it's not a terribly difficult project at all to do. So let's talk about what we're going to need. Aside from the flashback controller, you're probably going to find that you're going to need some tweezers. You're going to need a number one Phillips precision type jeweler screwdriver. Yes, I've had this one a very long time. All of the, uh, it's worn out, but it still works great. You're also going to need, or I would recommend anyway, some desoldering braid or wick, however you want to describe it. Might need to use a little bit of liquid flux. That always comes in handy. You might possibly need some wire strippers and be advised that the wiring is very thin. So you're going to need wire strippers capable of stripping 30 gauge wiring. And as always, you're going to want to make sure that you've got some isopropyl alcohol and a toothbrush and perhaps some Q-tips for cleanup work later on. You'll also need some solder and a good soldering iron that you prefer to use. And that's really pretty much it. There's really not much else that's required. It's a pretty, uh, it's a simple and uh, not a very long project at all. Only really should take just a few minutes to knock it out. Let's get started with taking the controller apart. To take apart the Intellivision flashback controller isn't too different from the original controller. But this is where you're going to need your number one Phillips precision screwdriver. So it's pretty simple. We just have four screws on the back that have to come off. Here, 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 and here. So I'm going to undo those real quick. And then at this point, all you have to do is just start to lift up on the top cover. 
Now, you're going to have the disc controller pushing up against it, and that's fine. It's got a spring under it, so that's to be expected. And this part's a little scary, but basically if you just keep pulling back, you'll eventually crack the catches on the back loose. And the disc will probably fall out on you as well, like it has on me. So I'm just going to set these pieces off to the side for right now. I don't need them. Here we are looking at the rest of it. Now, the actual flashback controller is incredibly similar to the original Model 1 Intellivision controller from the 80s. Let me go ahead and get these fire buttons removed off the side. One thing that's very important about these Intellivision controllers is there is a circular Mylar disc right here. On the original Model 1 controllers, this was colored white or had an opaque white color, but on the flashback controllers, this is actually clear in color, and so it is possible to lose it. But you don't want to do that because this disc is critical in the directional control operation of the controller. Let's go ahead and finish the rest of the disassembly of this. So taking the number pad overlay off and I'm going to go ahead and remove that disc back out. I don't want to lose it so I'm going to set it off to the side, keep it safe. Now right here we already have a big difference and it's right here. Now on the original Intellivision controllers Basically, there was a small block at the bottom that had spring switches on it, and then the actual Mylar circuit had a piece of foam rubber on top, or foam, that actually just provided pressure against those switches, and that's how all of the different signals made it through the cabling and into the console. On the flashback controller, they've actually improved upon this, in my opinion, by creating a small daughter board, or a small PCB interconnect here, where the actual wiring is soldered, to one side, and then on the opposite side, they've used a ZIF socket and have the Mylar insert into the ZIF socket. It's a better design. I'll show you in more detail as I take down the rest of this. Again, we've got two more, even smaller self-tappers here that need to come loose. These are almost like these are almost like M2 screws. And now the whole thing will just come right out like that. I'm going to go ahead and put this bottom assembly off to the side somewhere. And here's the rest of the control circuit. Again, it uses a very similar Mylar technology. The traces are made of a different material. Um, there's more of a texture to the button side of this, which is kind of interesting. But for the most part, it's essentially the exact same design. But with the daughter board here, again, I stated that it's actually soldered on one side, and then they soldered on a ZIF connector on the other side. So at this point, you can just carefully grab hold with your thumb and index finger right here where the Mylar plugs into it and just slowly kind of start to wiggle it loose like that and it'll pop out. This is just to make it easier to work on this because all of the work we need to do is just on this little board right here. So I'm going to put that off to the side and here we are looking at the board. Now a few things to note about this is that uh, this one's in good shape but it is not uncommon <laughs> to pull one of these apart and actually find some of the wiring has already started to come loose. And in fact, uh, this is interesting. As far as I know, this is a brand new flashback controller and I can already see where one of the pads is missing and the hot fix here was to scrape away some of the trace and they soldered the wire directly onto that. That's um, That gives you a warm fuzzy, doesn't it? So that just reiterates what I was getting ready to state. Um, these PCBs, the whole controller was made to a price so the traces on these are not the best, the pads are not the best, so you just want to be careful with it. Additionally, the wiring itself is very thin. It is actually 30 gauge stranded wire. This stuff is like hair thin. And uh, so yeah, it can come loose, it can break pretty easily. But long story short, what we need to do is we need to desolder each of these wires. Every single one of them needs to come out of the uh, input side here. And then we need to rearrange them in a way that makes it compatible to actually work on a standard Sears or Model 2 in television console. So what I'm going to do right now is I'm just going to put this up in a um, in my little uh, clamp and desolder the wires.
Now we have this cleaned up and ready to reattach the wires in the correct order for use with an actual Intellivision. It would also be a good time at this point to examine the other soldering joints that are on the controller from the factory just to make sure nothing else might need to be touched up in the process. Since you already are at this point, it's no big deal to just apply a little bit of heat to some of these just in case. We're now ready to reassemble this back into the controller. Now one thing I do at this point is I will now take the board and I'll twist it up a little bit just to kind of twist up these wires. This is really just to help manage them a little bit better when I go to put the board back into place. But again, be careful, these wires are thin. So when it goes back into place, it'll sit like that. I'm going to take the Mylar controller circuit here and I'm just going to carefully insert it back into the ZIF socket. Take your time with it and provide even pressure so that you don't crease it too much or potentially break it. And then you're ready to reattach the daughter board back into place. Now in doing this, don't tighten up the screws 100%. You're going to need you're going to find that you're going to need to give yourself a little bit of slack to be able to adjust this daughter board around a little bit to make it seat properly. And that's it. Now that's in, I can do that. All these wires are tucked up the way they need to be. Put this mylar back into place. And the number pad overlay as well. Reinstall the trigger fire buttons. Now they are they are sort of keyed. You'll find that on one side there's a notch that's missing and this notch needs to be facing down when you go to reinsert the fire buttons. And then we don't want to forget that disc, that piece of mylar that goes in between the two halves of the controller section, like that. Just snap the back into place and then you're ready to reassemble the controller. There we are. Now, let's plug it in and give it a test. Here we are again. I have the Intellivision 2 hooked up and powered up, connected to my LCD here. And I have the modified, internally rewired flashback controller already plugged into the console. So, does it work? Let's check it out. Yes, the disc controller is working great. No problems there. Top fire buttons are also working and responsive. There's the lower right fire button and the lower left fire button. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, clear, zero, and enter. So, success. Again, something to keep in mind, this is a semi-permanent modification. So if you have a set of flashback controllers with, a, with the Intellivision flashback and you would prefer to continue to use these, well then obviously this may not be a project for you. But if you're able to get a set of flashback controllers, maybe a set of spares or something to that effect, and you have an Intellivision 2 console that has controllers that aren't working very well, or perhaps you would just like to use a slightly easier and better to hold controller, then perhaps this is the project for you. So thank you again for hanging out with me this afternoon, and uh, I will catch you guys another time.